Hello there, welcome to Tech and Cash. I hope you are doing well. So for today's video, I want to talk about some of the most common pitfalls that I've seen people run into when they started playing Wingspan. So if you enjoy playing Wingspan and you want to get better at the game, this might be the video for you. Before we get started, I would also like to point out that a while ago, Flan from Winging It and myself has made a list of top 10 tips for Wingspan. So in that video, we cover a lot of good strategy tips and tricks that can really help you to get better at the game if you just started playing Wingspan. So I'll encourage you to check out that video if you haven't done so, it's on my channel. All right, the first pitfall I want to talk about is keeping and playing expensive birds in early game, especially birds that cost three foods to play. This is a little bit counterintuitive, but most of the good birds in wingspans that give you great brown power actually cost less food. In fact, many of them only cost one food. Beginners might be tempted to keep and play birds that cost three foods because they usually give you high bird points or extra bonus cards. It feels good to play them and you feel like you're scoring points, but the problem is food is difficult to generate in early game. The three food that you spend on one bird might take you two or three turns to gain back. So my advice is to focus setting up your habitats with cheap birds with good brown power in early game and save those expensive big point birds to play in the late game once you have a good way to generate food efficiently. Of course, there are always exceptions. For example, if you have birds like the raven, which you can play in the grassland to exchange eggs for food, then absolutely go for it. And in cases where you only have expensive birds in your starting hand, you might want to consider not keeping any of those birds and hope that you draw some better birds from the tray or the deck. Second pitfall I want to talk about is how beginners sometimes focus too much on scoring points in early game. Again, this is a little bit counterintuitive because in wingspan, you do want to score as many points as possible to try to win the game. But Wingspan is also an engine building game. So ideally, your goal for the first portion of the game should be trying to set up a good engine in your habitats that can help you to score a lot of points later in the game. Where I see a lot of beginners get stuck is when they focus too much on scoring points in early game by playing expensive big point birds like already discussed or deciding on what birds they pick up or play based on their bonus cards or end of round goals. In a typical game, bonus cards and end of round goals only add up to a small portion of your final score. Some bonus cards like falconer or omnivore specialist which give you 2 points per bird is helpful in deciding what birds to pick up or play, but there are also bad bonus cards like the bird feeder or backyard birder, which only give you additional 3 points for 5 birds. So it's almost never worth it to revolve your early game strategy around bonus cards like that. If you look at the end of round goal scoring, the difference between first and second place is only a few points. So if you're going to invest a few turns to try to win the end of round goal, you have to think about if those few turns is worth the extra few points. Those extra bonus points can definitely be game deciding in a competitive game, but in general, I would say focus on building good engine in your habitats with good brown power in early game will more likely help you to score higher points in the end. Next pitfall I want to talk about is when players spend too many turns picking up birds. A lot of situations where I've seen is where beginners would instinctively pick up any birds in the tray that fit their bonus cards or the end of round goals. And I already talked about how that might not be the best strategy in winning the game. Another scenario that I've noticed is where beginners will spend multiple turns picking up one bird at a time without any birds set up in their wetland. There's only limited turns in wingspan, so any turns that you spend drawing cards could be turns that you're not scoring points by playing birds or running your engine. Ideally, you want to have at least one or two birds set up in your wetland as soon as possible in early game so that you can efficiently pick up multiple cards in a single activation. 
Exception is when you have powerful birds like killdeer or the Franklin's Gull, which you can play in grassland to exchange eggs for cards. So we just talked about players spending too many turns picking up birds. Next, I want to talk about the pitfall where beginners pass on good birds that appear in the tray and did not pick them up. I understand it can be kind of overwhelming to pay attention to all different birds with their unique powers that are in your hand, in the tray, and on the player's board. But not all birds are created equal in wingspan, so being able to recognize what the good birds in different scenario is a big part of winning in wingspan is definitely a skill that gets better as you play more games and gain more experience. In general, I would say pay extra attention if you see any birds that only cost one food and give you brown power. Those are usually great for early game. Also look for brown power that generate resources like food, cards, or eggs. And also look out for birds with tucking power because each tuck card is worth one point at the end of the game. And some of those tucking power can also help you to cycle bad cards in your hand for a better one. If you are interested in in-depth analysis of each of the bird in Wingspan, you can also check out the tier list videos that are on my channel. Alright, the next pitfalls is something I struggle with sometimes, which is playing good birds too late. So I'm referring to birds with great brown power, but only give you low or no bird points at all. It is so tempting to play a good bird when you find it and you have the exact food to pay for it. But depending on how many times you are going to activate its brown power, it might not be worth playing it, especially in mid or late game. I would always try to give it a second thought before I play any low point birds past round 2, especially taking into consideration the 8 costs that I have to play to play those birds, and think about how many times I'll use the power, and also check and see if there are other birds with subpar power or no power but give me more bird points. The final pitfall I want to talk about is playing birds in suboptimal habitats. So in general, it's always a good idea to build a habitat with birds that allows you to gain multiple types of resources. So for example, birds that allows you to exchange eggs for foods and cards are better play in a grassland where you can generate eggs and additional resources in a single activation. And for birds that allows you to gain food from supply, they typically work best in either grassland or wetland where you don't already generate food. And wood duck is another great bird that you almost always want to play in the forest so that you can gain food and cards in a single turn. So next time before you play any birds that can live in multiple habitats, try to think more about which habitat will allow you to gain the most efficiency or benefit of the bird powers. And there you have it, that's my running thoughts on some of the common pitfalls that I've seen people run into when they started playing Wingspan. Hopefully you find this useful. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.